Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfinity Elite. Today, stop reserving every tool change. Get a tool setter. A tool setter is probably one of the first options you should add to any CNC. Without a tool center, you can't run multi-tool NC programs. This means you have to create a separate program for each tool. This might drive you to do things that are pretty crazy, like optimize your configuration for tool changes to minimize them versus trying to maximize the quality of the finish on your product. I'm showing Fusion right now, and you can see, I can just click the setup and post-process the entire multi-tool toolpath all at the same time. That's awesome. Now, maybe your software doesn't allow you to run multiple tools in a single NC program. Maybe it's a licensing problem or a lack of feature capability. Even if that's the case, there's still significant value in a tool setter. A tool setter will significantly speed up manual tool changes. You'll still have to turn the wrenches and swap the bits, but the machines can recalculate the Z offset for you based on the measurement of the tool against the tool center. This is a huge time saver, even if you aren't running multiple tools in the same program. Now there's many different options for tool centers out there and I'll briefly go over two of them. First and the most straightforward, Winfinity now offers their own tool setter, the EZZ. This one's really plug and play. It also comes with a mounting bracket for the QCW, which is very convenient if you're a QCW user. Now, I purchased the Dig 3D Fix from Topcom ZZ. They offer this one in a few different configurations. I chose the PMP normal closed version. The PMP simplifies the installation by eliminating the need for me to have to wire in a resistor. The NC configuration gives me an additional layer of protection against wiring or unit failures. With this, the master controller needs to see the tool set are connected or it will alarm. This is much safer than normal open where it doesn't actually know if it's connected or not until the tool setter gets touched off by the tool. It also has a white LED that tells me that it's connected normally. This light changes to blue when it touches, give me a nice visual confirmation that it's working like I expected. The Dig 3D offers an additional capability that can also measure tool diameter if that's something you find that you need to do. Now, I'd recommend the EZZ for anyone who wants a plug and play configuration, especially if you have a QCW. And I'd recommend the Dig 3D for someone who wants maximum capability and isn't afraid of a little bit of wiring. Now let's look at the installation. With the machine off, let's go ahead and open up the touch screen. And I'll just show you how the wiring is set up so you got a good reference. And I've done mine a while back, but you get a good idea here. So first, we'll look at the brown wire that goes to any open power pin. Doesn't have to be any particular one, just has to be one of them. Same goes for the blue wire here that goes into an open ground. Can be any ground, doesn't have to be any particular one. And then on the input side, we're going to use 18 right here and plug uh, the black wire into that input number 18. And after that, just secure it a little bit with some tie straps, try to keep it neat. I'm sure I do a better job myself. And then close the cover and we're ready to power back up. All right, we're powered back up and I have loaded my longest tool. And that's important. You wanna have your longest tool loaded for this. Because you're gonna set the clearance to make sure you don't crash when you measure tools and your longest tool would be the most likely one to crash. So first thing you want to do is hover over where you have the tool setter mounted and and then lower your Z to some place that you're comfortable with for having good clearance. I'd suggest at least 20 millimeters over the tool and or over the tool setter and I'm probably using about 40 and I'm totally good with, good with that. I'd rather be safe than than dangerous. So um, once you have that look at your machine coordinates and write them down so you know exactly where you are. We're gonna use these later. Now let's look at our setup. If we hit the setup key and we go down to the tool setter, um, I'm gonna select not use just to show you what that looks like. If I'm on, I'm on input 18, very important. This is the input that we wired to earlier. Yours might not be 18, but that's what I use. You just select that, pick tool setter, hit select. And you should be able at this point to touch the tool setter and see it change color 
if it if it does that and uh, depending on the model you have and also see over here the tool setter um, low change to high now for some reason yours says high and changes to low you can just hit the space bar and toggle that backwards uh, i'm going to hit that again to put it back to being correct and then uh, it'll invert those signals for you now if when you touch the tool setter it doesn't change from low to high or high to low you've got a wiring problem circle back and fix that before you move forward okay now uh, let's go to the auto tool zero make sure that the checkbox is set for enable auto tool zero and for both the tool setter x position and tool setter y position and those values from your machine coordinates earlier enter them in here the x position into your tool setter x position the tool setter y position into or your your machine y into tool setter y position and that that safe z height for um that we took earlier mine was about 40 40 millimeters above the tool setter enter that into the safe distance of the tool setter also enter a, a sane value into the tool zero feed rate this is going to specify how fast it moves you want it to move relatively slow i've got it set to 254 millimeters about 10 inches and um make sure you recognize here that what your measurement units are right you don't want to put the wrong value in and not realize it once you're done with that click save and we should be set now that we have it set up we're going to test to make sure we have it right um, so the first thing i'm gonna do is just zero like i normally would so I have my touch block set up and I'm gonna go ahead and zero. And uh, this is setting my, my Z offset for this tool. Now I'm gonna change tools. And I'm gonna do that by going over to the, uh, the screen here and going into the MDI screen. And I'm gonna pick any random tool, uh, doesn't really matter, so I'm just checking it out. T5M6, run. Now, the machine automatically moved to my tool change location because I have that set up and, and we'll cover that at the very end here. Um, it's kind of a bonus if you'd like to have it, have it do that for you. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change the tool and then I'll be right back. All right, I've got the tool changed and you'll notice here on the screen, it's been telling me to load that tool. And when I'm done, hit cycle start. So now that I've Got it done. I'm going to go ahead and hit cycle start. Now the machine is moving over to the tool setter and it's going to measure. So it went rapidly down to that location that we had set earlier and then it goes much slower until it hits the tool setter itself. And the tool setter is going to, in this particular model, it's going to turn blue when it touches. And now we're measuring. And it goes back to the location was at before the tool change was issued. Now that it's measured, I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that it's actually done what I think it should have done. So I'm just gonna jog down to very close to the location that I was zeroing off of. In this case, that's actually the spool board. So I'm probably within about five millimeters of the spool board. And I'm gonna go ahead and check on the screen to see where I'm at. And it says about five millimeters. So I believe that it has measured that tool correctly and I am good to go. So now I have set up my tool center successfully. Now as a bonus, we're gonna set up our tool change location as well. You may have noticed earlier that when I issued the tool change command, the spindle automatically moved to the front of the table for me so I could conveniently access it to do the tool change. Um, that's the way I want it so I don't have to manually jog there during tool changes, it'll just do it for me. So, um, First thing you need to do is jog to where you'd like the, the spindle to be when you want to do those tool changes. Now for me, that's right in front of the table and I have these machine coordinates that I'm gonna take note of right now, about 630, 50, and zero. And I want my Z to be all the way up, so that should always be zero. Now I'll go back to setup and in here, hit the tool changer, go to manual tool change. And then I'm gonna check all three boxes and set these values to the machine coordinates that I had noted just a second ago. When I'm done, I click save and save again. And now, every time 
I issue a tool change, it's gonna automatically move to that front and center location for me so I don't have to manually jog it. It's awesome.